Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I drew this artwork of Nerissa from Hololive. So we've got the head. The, the head I always do. This one is actually a mistake. I've drawn it correct technically, but the forehead is way taller than I usually do, and that's going to cause me problems as we're going to watch and find out. For the most part, I, I didn't do guides this time, and that may have been a problem because the torso is just a little bit off, and I need to kind of fix it. Um, but the idea is there. Um, I had a reference of an artwork that I thought looked really, really good, but I had to change a few things because uh, I wanted to draw more of a hand. There wasn't a hand in the original artwork that I did it on. Um, I looked up some ideas for clothing and as you can see even though there were ideas a lot of them just turned into a whole lot of skin but we have the uh thigh squish which is always nice i really enjoy making that personally um even though poor girl probably is being s cutting off circulation to her feet sorry narissa <laughs> But yeah, we have kind of a solid idea here. I ended up not doing the face first, which is unusual for me. Um, mainly because I wanted to make like a little teaser for it on Twitter where I was like, guess which character it is. And a few people got it right, a few people didn't, but overall, it turned out pretty good. Um, I'm super proud of it. Um, I know a lot of the, uh, the children coming up under me in terms of my age, I'm 29, but a lot of the 14 and 15 year olds don't like hyper sexualized artworks. And in my opinion, that's kind of a good thing because stay away from my art. <laughs> don't be weird. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually given me pause lately. Um, whether or not I should include artworks like this on my YouTube just because I know specifically on my YouTube account, a lot of people, even though my demographic says they're like 21 to 25, I don't believe it. I think anybody with a brain in, um, in YouTube knows that 24 to 25 demographic is mostly children claiming to be older. And I'm not going to like say, no, no, -uh, don't do that because let's be real. I did it too. I got on YouTube when I was 16 years old, way back when, back in 2008, I believe, either 2008 or 2009, but I don't actually remember. I might have the dates very wrong, but even back then I was like, ah, I'm, I'm 21, you know, <laughs> I wasn't, I don't think anybody is. But yeah, it's um the the generation coming up after me is very much not into uh the same thing my generation was. My my generation was very hypersexualized. Everything is okay and nobody can judge you for what you like. But um this generation is more of, of a puritan generation and that that's definitely not everyone just because some people are a majority are doesn't mean everyone is. But for the most part, you know, it's it's kind of weird for people like me who uh are were so used to people saying that uh sexual sexualization was okay and that it was empowering but it's not seen that way and that's in some ways probably the way it should be um even if not everyone agrees it's it, it's got a point they're they're not 100% wrong but i myself have always really really enjoyed um anime and it's like openness to sexuality so I, I try to like ride the line of what's acceptable versus unacceptable and for the most part I really hug that line to the point where it could depending on the person could easily be seen as unacceptable whereas my moral compass is a bit different from everyone's and they meant that might not be uh everyone's cup of tea so it just is what it is I know that I went on a bit of a tangent in this artwork but um I thought that'd be something fun to discuss. It's one of those things that um, nobody's wrong for how they feel as long as they aren't hurting anyone. For example, if your beliefs and ideas turn into actions that hurt someone, that's when the line gets crossed. You know what I mean? So, for the most part, uh, just kind of taking this artwork and planning it all out. I definitely went overboard on the planning this time to the point where I pretty much made a finished artwork. But now we're zooming ahead and we're going to start doing the line art. I definitely simplified things in the line art that were a bit more complex at first. And 
that's okay. We're just trying to refine what's there, and sometimes that means less detail. I just had a uh, dinner, so I'm just recording now, and uh, yeah, dinner was good. I uh, I enjoyed myself. But um, yeah, we're getting to the point where we're doing lines. Um, I couldn't quite figure out how I wanted the lines to be on the breast where the belt is kind of hugging them. And I think overall, I'm not super proud of how I did them. They're just kind of meh. So maybe next time I'll do better. But for now, this is kind of just what I got. I also had to adjust the waistline because I felt like the waistline was too thin when I first did it. So I had to go in and make it a bit thicker to make it make sense with the character a bit more. The main issue you get in anime when you draw large breasts is some people assume that you can just make the waistline really, really skinny. And you can. It's technically not wrong. Anime is very stylized, but I like to, to uh, try to adjust proportions of the character to be somewhat believable. Like, if a character has a thicker waist and, um, and a large chest, they're probably going to have, like, a, their waistline's going to be a bit thicker, right? Not just their hips. Um, and it took me a while to realize how thin I'd accidentally made the waist on this particular artwork, so I had to go in and correct it later. Just because it didn't quite make much sense, if you know what I mean. And it doesn't have to make sense. It's a cartoon, but I don't know. I, I like to at least leave some small semblance of possibility to it. You know what I mean? I think if we're being honest, if any human being in real life looked like an anime character, it would be concerning to look at. Like, whoa, what's wrong with her? <laughs> so it may, it, it creates like a suspension of disbelief. You need to like basically look at a character and say like, I know it's not real, but I choose to believe it. And I think the same way movies have suspension of disbelief, I think anime has to as well, because the proportions are so crazy. But I think because they're a cartoon, they're easier to accept. You know what I mean? There's kind of a level of separation between brain and reality. I also struggle with the hair this time because Nerissa has very... Uh, has hair that kind of duels itself down the middle of the forehead. And I felt like I didn't quite get it right at first. So now we're starting to get ahead. I'm starting to draw the drapery of the hair. And I'm super uh, happy with how I'm doing bangs now. So here we go. We're starting to add the drapes and the hair. Nice curves everywhere. I love drawing curves. It's it's like flicking my wrist. It's so much fun. All right. Now we're going to start doing the base colors. I did little adjustments with the liquify tool. Planning out everything. I'm actually very disappointed with how the jacket turned out in this particular artwork. I felt it's kind of Kind of bad, if I'm being 100% honest. The wrinkles I did on them just looked bad. Yeah, I, j I just didn't have a good reference, and I really should have fixed that before I went into it. You know what I mean? But I definitely got the face right on the finished product, and I'm definitely happy about that. So now we're doing the uh, rendering for the stomach. There's a There's a basic heart pattern that happens whenever you draw um, anime. There's like a, a heart shape in the abdomen and that you kind of have to follow that and treat it like it's 3D. You gotta plan everything out and really uh, get a good reference to make sure that your lighting is correct. I'm actually noticing a mistake I made right now, which uh, I end up fixing, but for the most part, it should have been uh, changed a bit at the finished product. So now I'm getting all the chest and um, breasts taken care of, some light gradients on the, uh, oh goodness, what's it called, like the collarbone, just getting everything to look correct. I, I went, I'm spending a lot more time doing soft shading on the skin now, and I think it's paying off personally. So here pretty soon we're going to start doing the thighs. Yep, there they are. There we go. Now I did a 
tonal curve to kind of change the colors a bit to make them make a little more sense. Now we're going to start the rendering on the uh, jacket, which again, I'm not super happy with how I did it, but it is what it is. So there we go. Do some gradient work. kind of just staring here watching myself do this like I ah, do this you idiot instead of what I actually did it's funny how hindsight can change how you view an artwork so I added a uh, jeans texture or uh, denim texture I think is what uh, it would actually be called and that definitely brought the pants to be a bit more realistic or short sorry so now we're doing the hair and I've simplified how I've done hair recently, and I'm kind of happy with the results. Doing the eyes now. Yeah, there we go. Now we're going to add kind of a gradient on top of everything to kind of blend it in a bit more. Do the background, and we are pretty much in the clear now. Some hard light layer, some uh, chromatic abrasion little specks everywhere, and there we go. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. See you guys next time. Bye.